today the Lord will visit you. All your expectations shall be granted in Jesus' name. I pray for you right now, having that spirit of forgetfulness and loss of memory. I rebuke that spirit. I can't come out and enter no more in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray for you that is having case of serpentine spirit in your family. And that person that that thing like snake is walking in your body, I command that spirit to pack your load, come out and enter no more. I cast it abyss in Jesus' name. Amen. I command the serpentine kingdom to catch fire. Be free from their manipulation and influence in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray for you having that spirit husband. I bind the spirit husband and I cast it to abyss in Jesus' name. Amen. And that person having a spirit arising and falling, I rebuke the spirit. I command you, pack your load, come out of their life, enter fire in Jesus' name. Amen. And I command that spirit wife, cash fire. Cash fire. Come out and enter no more in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit of untimely death, I take authority in heaven over you. I bind you, I chain you, and I cast you to abyss in Jesus' name. Amen. Precious daddy, every contrary spirit, ancestral spirit, every marine spirit, every witchcraft spirit, tormenting my people, fighting my people, I bind them, I bind their power. I chain them, I cast them to authority spirit. I want to remain bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, from today, I lose your power. And by your authority, I set all of them free in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray for you. That poison, I command it to cease. That headache, I cancel it. The heaviness in the head and the actions be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I cause that cancer be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. The high BP, I cancel it. I pray be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And I command that person that enemies are bound you be loosed. Amen. I lose you. Whatever they have done against you by the blood of Jesus, I nullify and I cancel it. Amen. Be free in Jesus' name. Amen. That person that fall into a pit in the dream, I rebuke the spirit. I command you, come out of that pit in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that all the evil spirit that wants you to entangle in that place, I command them to be slain by fire. Amen. Let them be paralyzed in Jesus' name. Amen. Precious Father, touch them one by one. That person that something is moving up and down your body, I command you to catch fire. Be free in Jesus' name. Amen. And that person having cobwebs covering your face, I command the cobwebs to catch fire. Let that thing clear away from you in Jesus' name. Amen. My daddy, that person with coronavirus, I cancel it now. Amen. You spirit of coronavirus, spirit of death, I bind you. I bind your power. I cast the only spirit. I want to remain bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Precious Father, bless my people. Open way where there is no way. Lord, he they seek. Find a battle. Lord, give them victory. All I pray this hour. Contend with those that contend with your people. Give us victory in Jesus' name. Amen. I request your angels to go around the whole world and deal with all the power troubling my people. Father, deliver my people in Jesus' name. Amen. As I speak your word now, Father, glorify your name. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we get seated? Glorify your name. Father, glorify Master Jesus, glorify Father in heaven, glorify Alpha and Omega, glorify I am that I am, glorify The mighty in battle, glorify The God of choosing, glorify Our Messiah, glorify Our Redeemer, glorify I am that I am, glorify Father, glorify Father in heaven, glorify. Father in heaven, glorify your name. Father, glorify your name. Father, glorify. Abba, Father, home. Father in glory, home. Father in glory, glorify your name. Father, glorify your name. Amen. 
Turn your Bible to Psalm 125. Psalm 125 from verse 1. And then you read. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide it forever. As the mountains around about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. In Second Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I read verse 10, look at your Bible. Who delivered us from so great a death and the deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. In Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews, look at your Bible. Hebrews chapter 2. I read verse 13. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God had given me. From these chapters and verses, I'm talking to you on the topic, they that trust in the Lord. They that trust in the Lord. Many things are bound in this life that makes us to worry or run about for solution. Such things at times are the works of the devil. In fact, they are the works of the devil. In John chapter 10, verse 10, a, the Bible says, The thief cometh not, but for to keep to steal and to destroy. I do not know what the devil is, you know, presenting before you, or the activities of the devil in your life. These are the things that make people to run up and down. Or those things which the Lord has allowed to try their faith and make them to have faith in him or search their lives and draw closer to him in prayers and be holy. This could be the thing that sometimes make people to run up and down. To be able to see though that there's no hope. If these things are happening there right now, I want you to understand that it's need for you to have faith, for you to have confidence, for you to trust in the Lord. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, I read verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. And it says, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, God might allow situation for you to make you to have faith in him. And instead of developing faith in him, you'll be running up and down. There's no point for that. So whatsoever that comes your way, have faith in God. Trust in him. He will justify the confidence you have in him in Jesus' name. Amen. So I don't know what they're going through now. Sometimes you allow situations that make you to draw closer and it's your purity and it's your holiness. And if I become partakers of God's divine purity, holiness, and then you begin to run up and down. Instead of accepting the treatment and become what God wants you to be. And look at Hebrews chapter 12. I read from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If he endure chastening, God delayed with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Or if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us 
and we gave them reverence, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of Spirit and live? For they very really live for a few days, chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our own profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. You see why God allowed trial? He wants to make you to be partaker of his holiness. He wants you to seek after him, search your life, ensure that nothing is standing between you and God. You become pure, become holy. Instead of people taking this treatment and adjusting and becoming what God wants them to be, they began to be jittery and run up and down. If that is your case, my friends, I want to understand, no matter whatever that comes your way, trust in the Lord. So that the Lord will perfect that which concerns you in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, the Israelites journey to the promised land. Remember that journey. It's full of trial. It's full of, you know, God walking on his people. Israelite journey to the promised land. Instead of taking them through the short way, the road, the Lord took them through the wilderness. Through the wilderness of the sea. To build their trust and confidence and faith in him. I don't know what they are passing through now. God is working on you. Make sure you trust in him at all times. And it shall be well for you. No matter the trials or problems of this life. Those that put their trust in the Lord shall overcome. And never look back nor backslide. They shall overcome in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I don't know what they're going through. Don't look back. Don't pass light. Trust in him. If you look at the place we read before, Psalm 125, verse 1. What is that happening to you? What is that you are going through? What is the situation now? There is something God wants to work out in you. I read, verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. But abide forever. As the mountain are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. So trust in him. Trust in him at all times. You will never be disappointed in Jesus' name. Amen. So in this message, which I consider the fluid of head is one, the reasons and example. Two, our expected response and the benefits. Let's go to point number one. The reasons and examples. Everyone of believer should know that the whole world lieth in wickedness. You should know that. That in this world there is no heaven on earth. Are you hearing me? Because of the devil, demons, they are human agents. They have made the world to be a terrible place. Sinners ungodly people, wicked people, devil, fallen angels, they have made this world a terrible place and made the whole world a lie in wickedness. If you turn your Bible to the book of John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what he comes to do, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's the one that has been cast down here. And then he has made this place a terrible place, the earth. If you look at the Bible, in Revelation chapter 12, from verse 7, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, and it reads, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was the earth place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. And they loved 
not their lives unto death. Now look at verse 12. Therefore, rejoice in heaven. Those that have the privilege that to be where Satan has been cast out, he said, rejoice ye heavens. Now look at what followed. And ye that dwell in them, rejoice. Why? The devil has been cast down. Look at that same verse. Woe to the habitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. You can see it. You see why the whole earth lies in wickedness. The devil has come to cause havoc, to carry out his evil work, to keep the sting and to destroy. And that's why the, the Bible says, it says, Woe to the habitants of the earth. But the devil has come down with great wrath. He's walking tirelessly, very angry. He has missed heaven. He can't go to heaven again. So he's doing everything possible to make sure that nobody goes to heaven. That's why there is deception and lies and wickedness everywhere. Because devil wouldn't give human beings breathing space. He wants them to be enslaved and suffer and cause God. I pray that no matter what they are going through, do not yield to the work of the devil. Depend in the true God, the living God. Trust him. He will see you through in Jesus' name. So, take note of that. The devil has come down with great wrath. And that's why he has made it a terrible place. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world lieth in wickedness because the devil has polluted and destroy everywhere, turning the heart of people against God. Those who refuse to repent. And that's why wickedness is the order of the day. And that's why all this are happening here and there, evil here and there. Wickedness, killing, destruction, a lot of things. So many evil activities are going on in this world against human beings, against humanity. And believers in particular, persecution, trials, problems, poverty, sickness, diseases, afflictions, many of these things can be best described in the following scriptures. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, all these are the activities of the devil. It says, and I read 24, Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and the earthquakes in diverse places. All this at the beginning of sorrows. Now listen to me. As we have it now, all these are the activities of the wicked ones. And so, because of the devil, the whole world is going through terrible problem of kingdom rising against kingdom, famine, economic recession, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. And the Bible said, all oh, makes for sorrow. So it is very clear that the whole world lies in wickedness because of the activities of the devil. I don't know what they are passing through. If you look at Acts chapter 14 and verse 22, to a happy home in heaven at last in Jesus' name. Remember the wilderness journey to the promised land, a lamp flowing with milk and honey. Chapter 14, verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. That is the road. Are you going through tribulation, trials, persecution? That's the road to enter to the happy home. That's the road to enter to Canaan land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And so, don't be afraid. When you are passing through this road, trust in the Lord. Because 
Why are we having this problem here and there? The devil is at work. He can't enter heaven. And so he made sure that he will hinder as many as he can so they can take them to hell fire. That's what the Bible said in John chapter 10, verse 10. Hey, the thief cometh not, but for to keep, to steal, and to destroy. So when you see all this activity of the devil, don't run to him. He is not a friend. He comes to keep, to steal, and to destroy. I say, don't run to him. So many people are running to him. Instead of running to him, trust in the Lord. The Lord will surely deliver you, and the Lord will deliver you. If you look at First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walked about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom he may swallow. So he's angry, and he's our enemy. That's what the Bible says. The whole world lieth in world wickedness. So when you see this wickedness, don't run to the devil. Trust in the Lord. Are you hearing me? Trust in him. He is dependable. He's reliable. He will never disappoint you. If I allow you to go through all these things, it's just to perfect you, to make you to have more confidence and trust in him. Not that he hated you. He's just training you, perfecting you. And if you look at the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19, what is it? You say, ah, the enemies are so many, are so much, all that troubling you, nothing to worry about. God is there to see you through. They may be like a flood, but one God will put them into flight. One God will bring them down. If you look at chapter 59, verse 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. And his glory from the rise of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. He see you. In this condition we are into now, in this present world of coronavirus pandemic, no matter how many things are against you, don't be afraid. The spirit of God shall lift up a standard against them. And so nothing to worry, nothing to fear. No matter the turbulent situation, no matter the crisis, no matter the lockdown and problem here and there, my friend, don't be afraid. Trust in the Lord. The Lord will surely defeat our enemies. The Lord will surely bring all these things to naught. He's God. Are you hearing me? And so, nothing to worry, nothing to fear. You will surely survive. You will see the end of the pandemic in Jesus' name. I say the church shall see the end of the pandemic in Jesus' name. And so, Trusting him at all times. If you look at the Bible in Psalm 34, verse 6, what is it that's happening to you? Trying to move your faith away from God. Don't do that. Like you don't have this, you don't have that. My friend, don't allow your faith to grow good. The Lord allows them to perfect you to call on him. When you call upon him as a trust in him, you will see God in action. Look at the Bible in Psalm 34. I read Psalm 34 verse 6. Never you think that God has forsaken you. Never you think that God is not able to deliver you. He will deliver you. And I'm telling you, he has delivered you. In Psalm 34 verse 6, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The poor man cried. Of course, poor man, in most cases, are characterized with a lot of problem. But I want to leave you nothing to worry about. Whether you are poor spiritually or physically or materially, nothing to worry about. No matter the problem that surrounds you like mountain, don't forget. When the enemies are coming as a flood, the Spirit of God shall lift up a standard against him. Now listen to me now. If right now that you are going through a lot of problem, don't forget. God wants you to call on him, to trust in him, to call on him. Like this poor man, in, when we read, it says in verse 6, this poor man cried, that's what we're going to do, cry to him, solution will come. This poor man cried, the Lord heard him, the Lord will hear you. I said the God that had the poor man will hear you. In that your poor condition or poor state, the Lord will hear you. I don't know what they're going through. This poor man cried, and the Lord had him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Listen to me. 
The Lord will save you and deliver you from all your trouble in this time and forever in Jesus' name. So, nothing to worry, nothing to fear. Like the poor man, victory shall be yours. Look up unto him, cry to him. If you look at verse 19, many are the afflictions to the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. How many? All, all. He will deliver you out of all the afflictions all the economic recession and all the diseases and all that like my god the god that i serve the living and the true god almighty all powerful he will deliver you he will deliver you from all your trouble in jesus name yeah. so take note i don't know what i'm going through i'm assuring you victory is certain I say God will give you victory Amen. on every side. No matter the trouble, we must not behave as though we have no one or we have no solution. No matter the trouble, we must never behave like that. Are you hearing me? We should follow the example of those before us and overcome and make it a last in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you look at the book of Psalm. 140 verse 1 Psalm 140 verse 1 Look at it Deliver me, O Lord from the evil man Preserve me from the violent man That should be a prayer Verse 2 Which imagine mischief in their heart Continually are they gathered together for war They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent Others' poison is under their leaves. Say, Lord, keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed overthrow my goings. Honestly, the Lord will preserve you. Honestly, the Lord will deliver you. He did it for the psalmists of old. The Lord will do it for us in this time. I don't know what you are passing through and whatever is situation where you are, even in a nation where you are. Don't be afraid. God will deliver you from the evil ones. Amen. If you look at the book of Job chapter 14, verse 14. Job chapter 14, verse 14. There's no point of running up and down and being jittery. Uh, don't make that mistake. Trust in the Lord. Look at chapter 14, verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time. Look at what Job said. Will I wait till my change come? He see you and you wait for the Lord in the midst of your trial, in the midst of persecution, affliction and temptation and trouble. You wait upon this God honestly. I'm assuring you that God will change your situation. If you trust in this living God, the God I serve, God will change your situation. So, don't be afraid. You see this time, you see this trouble, it will soon be over. Amen. Can I hear you say amen? amen? So, we should wait for the Lord. And as we wait, we shall overcome all the turbulent situation in Jesus' name. Amen. So, wait on the Lord. Wait as Job waited. I will wait until my change comes. I'm assuring you that change will definitely come. Amen. God will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, don't forget, the psalmist said in Psalm 125, verse 1 again, let's read before we move forward. It says, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. But abide it forever. I'm assuring you, as you wait upon the Lord, you shall never be removed. You shall abide forever. Amen. Honestly, the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. Let's go to point number two. Our expected response and the benefit. No matter the trouble or the enemy behind them, we should not fear nor worry. Rather, we should put our confidence in the Lord by the psalmist. For the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, Romans chapter 8, and verse 31. And I read, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Who shall lay 
anything that the church or God's elect. It is God that justifies. You see you, God will defend you. Amen. God will justify you. Amen. God will deliver you. Amen. If God be for you, nobody can be against you. And you shall not be in want of anything in Jesus' name. Amen. He is equal to the task. Are you hearing me? He's all powerful. He's all mighty. God is equal to the task. That challenges you have now. God is equal to the task. I don't know the prevailing situation. I don't know what is happening. Like, as you do, that you can't survive, you will survive. You will look as you do, you can never make it again. There is nothing to worry about. Maybe they have told you that sickness you have no cure. There is nothing to worry about. You still have God, the creator of the universe, with whom all things are possible. Human beings are limited, but we are serving the unlimited God. If you look at the Bible, I don't know what they're going through. The noise might be so terrible now. Everywhere I see though, you will not survive. You will survive. In the book of Psalm 46, Psalm 46, I read verse 1. Look at your Bible. Psalm chapter 46. Reading verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the water dear up roar and be trouble, though the mountain shake with swelling dear up, there is a river, the stream whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be removed. God shall help her and not right early. Are you going through? Troubling situation, the water is roaring and troubled, mountains are shaking, it appears there is no hope. And you will not survive this troubling situation. I want you to understand that is God with us, that God will deliver you. Yeah. All you need to do, trust in Him at all times. I'm assuring you, He is the Lord of hosts. Look at verse 7. He says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He is the Lord of hosts, the captain of the army, the man of war, the God of battle. He is with us. You can never be defeated. I say God will deliver you. I don't know what I'm passing through. That terrible, ugly situation. Look at Psalm 91. Psalm chapter 91. I don't know what you are going through. The noise everywhere. That you know, as if though you will not survive. Who told you? Is the sea roaring? Is the wind blowing? Is the noise that you everywhere they say this pestilence and this disease everywhere and you are afraid is falling and become afraid? Don't be afraid. Trust in the Lord. Look at Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will serve the Lord, he is my refuge. And my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Now, look at verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the stance of the fowler, from the noising pestilence. What is the noising pestilence? Trust in the Lord. He will deliver you. Look at verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shade and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noon there. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Are you hearing me? What is that noisy pestilence around you? Am I showing you? All those things, God will silence them. Amen. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Now, look at Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. 
What is it that making you to be afraid and you are losing hope? Trust in him. By the time he said, I will trust in him at all times. Trust in him. He is dependable. Trust in him. He will never disappoint you. Trust in him. He has power to do all things. In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26, it says, and I read, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. How many things? All. all things. So be rest assured, in this program today, the Lord will give you answer. Yeah. He will set you free from that noisy pestilence in Jesus' name. Yeah. So get ready, get ready. All I'm assuring you, victory is yours. Are you hearing me? No matter what you are going through, I say what? Victory is yours. We should trust in him at all times. With whom all things are possible. Are you hearing me? Psalm 71 verse 1. 71 Psalm. 71 verse 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. You see, you as you trust in him, you shall never be put to confusion in Jesus' name. Amen. You will survive that situation. Yeah. And you will overcome. Yeah. Are you hearing me? That expectation shall be granted. Yeah. Our God is well able. If you look at Psalm 62, verse 5. My soul, wait thou upon God. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock. And my salvation he is my defense i shall not be moved you see you in this situation you shall never be moved yeah. the lord will defend you and deliver you but seven in god is my salvation and my glory the rock of my strength and my refuge is in god verse eight trust in him at all times ye people pour out your heart before him God is a refuge for us. Do you hear it? Trust in him at all times. In time of pandemic, coronavirus, trust in him. In time of famine, trust in him. In time of sicknesses, affliction, trust in him. In time of threat from the enemy, persecution and trials, trust in him. In time of need, trust in him. What is it you are going through? Trust in him at all times. It's a refuge. He will see you through. In Psalm 20, verse 7, Psalm chapter 20, and read verse 7. Trust in him. Depend on him. Psalm 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Are you hearing me? All those people that trust in chariots, in horses, if you look at verse 8, they are brought down and fallen, but we that trust the Lord are risen and do what? Stand upright. You see you, you will rise, you will never fall. Those that trust in horses and chariots, those that trust in man made, those that trust in their money, in their whatever, Listen to me. Outside God, they shall fall. But you that trust in the Lord, I'm sure you shall stand and you shall never fall. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. We should not trust in anything else, in any other thing. Come, what man? We must not trust on man, on money. We must not trust on the things of this world, the gods of this world. On devil and demons, we must not trust and depend on them. They can disappoint you at all times. In fact, they are full of disappointment. But we have one God who art in heaven, our maker, our creator. He cannot disappoint you. Are you hearing me? He is able to do all things. Are you hearing me? We should trust in God. In all situations, like those of old, and the Lord will see you through. I say, God will see you through. Trust in Him at all times, and you shall never fall. He will never allow us to be put to share. 
not by slight. He shall meet all our needs. Are you hearing me? The psalmist enjoying us in Psalm 125 verse 1. Psalm 125 verse 1. I read, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. The mountain are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. As you trust in him, you can never be removed. I said, the Lord will surround you as mountain surround Jerusalem. We shall overcome whatever we are going through as we trust in him. I say we shall overcome. No matter the pestilence, no matter the economic recession, no matter the bandit and attack and all the persecution and trial, we shall overcome. And we shall be blessed. We shall be healed. We shall be saved. We shall be delivered. We shall be protected. And we shall make heaven at last in Jesus' name. Remember, in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Will you believe? If you believe today and trust in him, all things shall be possible for you. If you look at the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, but my God, to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I don't know what I'm looking for. If you trust in him, he will supply all your needs. I said the Lord will meet all your needs. In Psalm chapter 40 verse 1 Psalm chapter 40 reading verse 1 I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit out of a mighty clay and set my feet upon a rock and establish my going. As you trust in him, he'll bring you out of horrible pit. The Lord will bring you out of slippery ground. He will establish you on the rock of ages and you shall go forward and never backward and never fall in Jesus' name. And you will sing a new song in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 7, as he shall be giving you. I don't know what I'm looking for. As you trust in him, ask from him whatsoever you need. For the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, As he shall be giving you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. As you ask today, you will receive. So all those that put their trust in him, Shall go home blessed. Amen. Shall go home delivered. Amen. Shall go home freed. Amen. I'm assuring you, the Lord will meet all your need in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you getting ready now? Trust in Him at all times. The Lord will defend you. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will vindicate you. The Lord will see you through. Trust in the Lord at all times. I'm assuring you, you shall be blessed in every area in Jesus' name. So finally, for those who are sinners and backsliders, they should repent of their sins, confess them to the Lord, and promise God no more. Believe that Jesus died for you, shed his precious blood for you, and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for your justification. Renounce all your evil. Reject the devil. Invite Jesus to come into your heart. To be a Lord, their personal savior. And you shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Remember, a Christian is not a sinner. And a sinner is not a Christian. In First John chapter 3, verse 8, he said, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For he still remained him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. And if you are asking what is sin, 1 John chapter 5 verse 17 says, All unrighteousness is sin. So take note, anything that is not righteousness is sin. And a sinner is not a Christian. And a Christian is not a sinner. So if you want to receive from God, if you want to trust in him today, 
you must repent, confess your sins, and promise him no more. One thing I want you to understand is anything that is not righteousness is sin. It could be hatred, it could be envy, lying, anger, bitterness, unclean thought, keeping malice, bearing grudge, selfishness, unbelief, unforgiveness, insincerity, blasphemy, unfaithfulness, covetousness, love of money, love of the world. Confess them and promise God no more. I mean your ways. Those involved into backbiting or speaking evil of other people, murmuring, causing people, swearing with heaven and earth, that is sin. That's unrighteousness. What should be an idol or making an idol? Have an idea in your heart? That's sin. Confess and gather those things, burn them. Reject the devil, renounce his work. Are you among those that go to native doctors for pan reading? Are you among those people that go for divination? Are you consulting the dead? Repent and promise God no more. All unrighteousness is sin. Such your life. I don't know what you are giving yourself over. Amen. Repent and it shall be well for you. May I remind you, my brothers and sisters, my friends who are watching me, all unrighteousness is sin. Are you among those that are into stealing? All those people that are stealing from their company, maybe are involved into burglary, into armed robbery, into any form of stealing, fraud. You do black people, white, we do. Repent to them and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Or you do the government, repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Confess your sins, renounce them, and make your way right. Do restitution where necessary. The unrighteous are not in the kingdom of God. And if you are stealing money from people, when we are giving offering in this church, we don't need your money. Don't give us. It's not the money where you're taking it. Search your life. All those people that are involved into terrible acts of masturbation, fornication, adultery, homosexual, lesbianism, those involved into gay marriage, those involved into rape, repent to and say, I'm sorry. Those involved into prostitution, private or public one, that is evil. And all those people that are involved in the abortion, the abort or born baby, these are terrible sins. Or into hired assassin, into terrorism, into ritual killing, into kidnapping and killing. All these things are terrible wickedness. In the sight of God, in the sight of man, confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry. If you're involved into this thing, please don't need your money in the church. I mean, there are ways. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All these people are fighting and quarreling, disobedient to their husbands, stubbornness, beating their wife. These are terrible sins. Or maybe you are employed in the place of work, you don't do the work, you call less salary. That is sin. But you don't pay those working for you. That is sin. Repent and promise God no more. The mercy of God will come upon you. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. All these people giving bribe and taking bribe and starting money from people because of our uniform, because of our position. That is sin. I mean, there are ways. Or you smoke cigarettes or you take taking them cocaine, heroin, you are sending it and buying them. That is sin. You are taking snuff, confess them and promise God no more. Or it could be that you are taking alcoholic drinks, local or foreign one. One percent or half percent, you are selling it or buying it for people. Don't do that anymore. I mean, you are ways. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Confess all your unrighteousness, promise God no more. The Lord will show you mercy. And if you are among those that bleach your body, become yellow overnight, that is sin. Or you are involved in wrong marriage, you marry and divorce, you divorce your husband, you divorce your wife, or you multiply wives, you have three wives or four wives, seven wives. No, you don't need that. 
Or you are the woman that is a second wife or third wife or fourth wife and on and on. That's wrong. Or you are into gay marriage. That is abomination. Now, if you look at the Bible, let's see. In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4. Chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twin shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twin but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So marriage is between a man and a woman until they do you part. And if they have not separated you, my friend, do restriction. I mean their ways. Now it's acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. If you hear this word, harden up your heart. I mean you are ways. Are you among those people that paint your hands and paint your leg, paint your mouth, paint your eye, paint your body? You paint your body. You make up your body. You put extra finger, extra eye, extra nose, attachment and weave on palm, earrings and jewelry. That is sin. Remove those things. You don't need makeup. Or maybe a young man that do Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair, you play the hair like a woman, or you put on marks in your body, tattoos in your body. That is sin. You don't need those things at all, at all. I mean, you are ways. Unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. My Bible tells me in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, is that when they are spoiled, what shall they do? They will go after paint, after ornament. When a woman has spoiled, a young man has spoiled, they begin to change their body. You don't need to do that anymore. Because Psalm 1 at 9 verse 14 says, God has fearfully and wonderfully made you and marvelous are the works of God. You're a wonderful person before God. You don't need those makeup. And if you're there right now and you dress to expose your chest, your nakedness, your lap, you dress to key, to seduce people, to sin, that is evil. Cover your body properly well. Or you're a man that wear woman's garments, a woman that wear man's garment, that is abomination. In fact, the Bible said in Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, the woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man, not that a man put on woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination on the Lord thy God. Those that do such things are abomination before God. So repent and renounce them and stop doing them so that you will not be an abomination before God. You will not be defied before God. And if you do, that means you miss heaven. So I mean your ways. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. And it reads, Revelation 21 verse 8. But the fear of an unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which born with fire and brimstone, which the second death. People that do this kind of thing, all this kind of atrocity, they shall be cast into hell fire. So, I mean, their way. Remember, I've not spoken this word to condemn you, but to bring to light things you are doing that is evil. So you can repent of them and ask for the mercy of God. Because in Proverbs 28, verse 13, the Bible says, He that covereth the sin shall not prosper. Whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. God is willing to show you mercy, but you must confess all this evil and do them no more. Mercy shall be your portion. Remember, in Exodus 12, verse 13, God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That is why Christ came to die for me and for you. And he is the original lamp of God. In John chapter 1, verse 29, I read John chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the lamp of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So you can see that Jesus Christ is the original lamp of God that taketh away our sins. Not animal. Jesus, the real lamp of God. The Bible said in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world. And he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus shed the blood, he said, It is finished. That is 
the sacrifice of sins, it is all over. All the sacrifice of sins are all over. That is, it is finished. That's why you say in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. It's not a way, it's the only way. Only through him we have reconciliation with God. Our sins are washed away. We have eternal life. In John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, I come that they might have life, I have it more abundantly. And in John chapter 8, verse 36, he said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And also, if you look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And in John chapter 1, verse 12, Look at what the Bible said. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to then gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So, as you surrender your life, believe on his name, invite Jesus to have to be a Lord, their personal Savior, salvation shall be yours. You shall become a new creature. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and even 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So, if you are in this place now, what you need to do is to amend your ways, confess your sins and forsake them, and reject the devil and renounce his work. Believe that Jesus died for you, shed his blood for you, and was buried on the third day, he rose again for your justification. Invite him into your heart to be a Lord, their personal Savior. Salvation shall be yours. Remember, in Romans chapter 10, verse 30, he said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you are ready to call upon him now, rise up on your feet, I'll pray for you. And as you call upon him, trust in him at all times. Honestly, the Lord will see you through. Amen. Open your mouth and pray. Call upon him, confess all your sins and promise God no more. Everybody pray. Everybody pray and pray true. Call upon him, ask for the mercy of God, ask for the mercy of God, the Lord will forgive you. Oh Lord, I am sorry. I repent of every known and unknown sin on behalf of myself and all the congregation worldwide. Show mercy upon your people. It is never the way that any soul should perish. All I'm asking you, touch their heart. Turn them from the power of darkness to the power of the living God. Lord, let there be total transformation. Touch everyone. As the crying call upon you, Lord, save your people, O Lord. I pray for eternal salvation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, I want to pray for you as you put your hands up. That person that is into unforgiving heart, promise God no more. Forgive and God will forgive you. The person that is full of bitterness and pride, evil thought, confess that thought, immoral thought, the Lord will show you mercy. And the person that is in you know, all lying, don't do that anymore. That is a sin. Confess that and promise God no more. All of you that are into, you know, higher than such sin. These are gross wickedness against God, against humanity. Repent and promise God no more. And that person that is, you know, you are planning to, you know, commit suicide. That is wickedness. If you do that, you go to hell. Repent and promise God no more. Judas took his life and went to hell. Don't do that. All unrighteousness is sin. And you that is into adultery, repent and promise God no more. And you that is going to fornication, going up and down, committing terrible sin of immorality, ask for the mystery of God. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And you that is involved into you know, stealing from people, stealing wherever you go, you must try to steal. That is sin. Amend your ways. Ask for the mercy of God. That person involved with the homosexual, promise God no more. Ask for the mercy of God. And that woman into the same act, ask for the mercy of God. The Lord will show you mercy. As I pray for you, search your life. Be sorry over your past life. Promise God no more. Now say this word after me. 
Almighty God. I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus. Wash my sins away from my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus. From today, I reject the devil. I renounce all his evil. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name I pray. And it is amen in heaven. Keep your hands up and pray for you. Father in heaven, I bring my people before you. Whatsoever they have done, known and unknown to them. Father, in your rod, remember mercy. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, I pray that you can Jesus name. Father, from this moment, I claim their spirit that so their body for Jesus. I pray, cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? Bring your hands as you give your offering. Keep your offering up. I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this offering. Oh Lord, sanctify our offering by the blood of Jesus. That no man can give above you as we give to you, open our ways. That they give us beyond our expectations 